Welcome back, everybody. Monday morning briefing video, episode 18. Uh, it's January the 19th, and so we're doing this on a Tuesday. I was going to do it yesterday, and luckily our electrician was here to wrap up. He had come last week and got our lights fixed and got our plug in for the clicker that came in, but he hadn't done the water. So he got here yesterday morning. Uh, right when I got here, he was already back there getting ready to go. And so they got water run and all that kind of stuff. So I was tied up kind of helping him move some stuff around and, and doing that kind of deal. And he was back there making all kinds of noise. So we didn't do the video yesterday morning. I was going to do it yesterday afternoon, but we had some visitors come in and uh, had a real nice couple from Lavernia come in and, and wanted to see the shop and visit. And so we enjoyed visiting with you. Glad you came by. And so, but we decided we're just going to go ahead and do it this morning. And then I've got a podcast interview that we're going to do um, this morning. I've been recording most of the podcast on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. So if you are in the area or whatever and you do come by the shop, um, if you're an early riser and you get here at like 8 or 8.30, I may be tied up um, and the shop will be locked because I'll be doing an interview. Um, and so for the next, I think I've got four weeks of interviews scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday mornings. I usually do them around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And that way by 9 or so we're done and I can get back to work. So it's not taking up a lot of a lot of shop time and so that's a good deal so since our last monday morning briefing video it's been very busy in here we've been cutting belts we launched the belt material packs last week and i want to thank everybody that bought some of those we every time i put i would cut like 25 sets or so and put them on the website and they would sell out and so i'd have to cut some more we ordered specific supply of leather for those belt material packs and i've cut just about all of it i've got a couple sides left maybe to uh, cut belts out of. I'm also being real particular when I cut them. If they've got a blemish or something in them that um, still makes the belt where you can use it, but it would depend on the size of the belt, I save those back for me and I can work through them. Um, no big deal. But the ones I'm shipping out to you should be pretty well blemish free and um, you know nothing that I would think that you couldn't tool over or anything like that. Um, but cutting belts, you're just gonna, you're going to get a few when you cut a side. You're not going to get just every single strip out of there is going to be um, completely blemish free. Obviously, it's leather; it's a natural product. So if you do notice a little something in a belt blank that you get from us or a liner, um, especially the belt body, just remember that you are going to tool that. Even a lot of times, even a basket stamp or something like that is going to cover that little blemish. Now, if it's a crack, a big crack in the finish or or something like that, um, we don't try to. We don't send that that belt blank out because of that reason because that's going to be a little bit harder to cover but if it's a scar you know an old scar real faint in there or maybe a a little bot mark or something like that you're going to tool over it uh, so you you probably won't won't even notice that whenever it's done but we've been trying to keep the belts stocked on the website if you go to the website and it says out of stock just hang tight maybe check back i try to post on social media when i add new ones to there but we are about to be out of belt blanks again. I do have another shipment. I'm on a re constant reorder thing. So once they ship my leather, they, they go ahead and put another order in for the exact same batch. So within a couple of weeks. The problem is you guys really like the belt packs. So we're going through them really quickly. So there may be a week or so. Where we don't have any, but we will keep them. As soon as it gets here, I'll cut more and put them on the website. Some other things. we got the clicker hooked up. I'll show you that here in just a second. But these... Knife scabbards, I already have a die, like I've mentioned in the knife, knife sheath video, I do have a die for the fold over knife sheaths. So we will be putting some packs on the website here pretty quickly, maybe this week, to where you can buy either three of these or six of these at a time. There's not a lot that's going to be in this material pack because it's basically the, the whole pattern is just one of these. So we wanted to put, you know, where you can put three of them together or six of them together and that way you can make a few of those if you want it. This will all be Herman Oak. My goal with this entire product line is going to be to get Herman Oak to your bench so that you can tool Herman Oak instead of turn, uh, tooling some economy or something that's not, not quite as good to tool on, and that way you can experience what good quality material is like. And so we'll hopefully have some knife sheets on there. We're working on getting all of our dies created, so the dies for the flip wallet, the bifold wallet, the wristlet purse, all of our project videos that are on our YouTube channel, we're going to be creating dies for all of those. And that way we can cut those those packs out, those material packs out, if you want them. And I won't have to hand cut a lot of that stuff. We're also going to probably put some of these wallets. I do have a die for the wallet, my flip wallet. 
in that project video, I have a die for that back or the main body of that wallet. I don't have any of the interiors. So I clicked out a whole lot of these, a whole bunch, and then leveled them off to where they're the right thickness. And so we might just offer just the wallet bodies in case you want those. Won't be a full material pack with all the pieces in it, but if you want a Herman Oak flip wallet back, we'll offer those um, as well. Uh, it's just kind of a, a raw material pack for now until we get all of our dies. We've got a lot of dies that we've got to get made. I was working on that yesterday some in between saddles. We're, we're kind of humped up on some saddles right now that I've got to get caught up. Caught up. I'm about four or five saddles behind um, with everything last year and just, just working stuff. So um, we're going to try to get caught up on those. But I've been trying to work on the die pattern so that we can get those sent off to Texas Custom Die and get our dies made for all the other projects. Um, haven't made any progress on Claudia's bag. Obviously, I didn't have time. I'm working on that evenings and weekends whenever I get a chance. We also got the wash station set up, so we're going to be washing some saddles today. I did wash a couple this weekend just at the house, and so we'll be oiling those. But a lot of y'all have asked about doing a video on how I do a clean oil and polish on um, the whole process because we have a video on, on breaking a saddle down to wash, and we will be adding to that with a video on how we wash them, condi condition them, um, kind of what we go through in that whole process and, um, and we'll try to do that here pretty soon. I've got to get these done and out of here because uh, they were they came in back before Christmas but I have one of ours that's a uh, trade-in that uh, we need to put on the floor for sale but we'll wash that first and we'll probably film that saddle being washed and stuff so you can kind of see what goes through on that. But let's check out the saddles right quick and then I want to show y'all kind of the couple of the, the couple machines that came in last week and kind of how we have them set up right now. All right, so here's our roper. Um, we've gotten the riggings put in, rigging slides installed. I got the swell cover on it yesterday evening before I left, and so this is ready to go with the candle back. We'll tool that and get that on there, then we'll be ready to put our skirts on and get it fit. This saddle's gonna move a lot quicker now that the rigging and the swell covers, cover is on. We did do the swell cover like I usually do. It's all one piece, the gullet cover and the sides, there's no seam in there. And this front went on really, really well. Uh, the, I can't complain, the swell cover really went on really easily. And so we were really happy with the way that that went on. Our ranch saddle here, we got the skirts on, I guess last mm -hmm. week it, that was on there. I didn't realize it, but he actually wanted round skirts, which isn't a big deal, it's not a problem, but we just had to go in here and draw our lines for our skirt pattern. Um, I confirmed with him yesterday that that was kind of what he was looking for. And so we'll trim that, match it on the other side and everything. But we've got our placement for our ring. We got our placement for our round ring. So that, it'll be an in skirt rigging. So that ring will go in there. And then our, we'll cut that skirt to make it a round skirt. That's a neat deal as long as you, if you keep a skirt pattern that's somewhat larger you can always make this radius a little tighter you know if you want a square skirt you can add to that before you cut it but the depth and the length and all that is usually the same and then for me on my saddles i don't know what everybody else does but for me it's usually fairly well the same drop and length and so i can change the outside perimeter of that skirt fairly easily and everything works out so this one will we'll get moving now we're about to have both these caught up with each other and we'll get those moving and we've got a couple saddles that I'm going to try to pull down, or trees, try to pull down this week and start getting ground seats in so that we can get those moving forward as well. Now both of these saddles were broke down already before Christmas, and so they're ready to, ready to go ahead and oil and condition. We washed these this weekend, so I just took them home and washed them on a rack there at the house since we weren't set up here yet with water. Um, but they're ready to go, so today we'll start oiling these and getting a good, good coat of oil into them and all their little parts and getting stirrup leathers replaced and any other kind of little repairs that need to be done on these. One of the things that we did on Friday, there was a uh, Textan down in Yoakum was having an auction. I guess somebody bought Textan, the, the manufacturing plant, and they were liquidating all the stuff that they had in there. Um, and so we went down there Friday just to kind of see what was down there and what we needed. There was one piece of machinery that I was interested in and um, it went for just a little bit more than I wanted to give for it, but I didn't, I don't need that machine. I just, I've always wanted one. It was a creaser. I've always wanted to get a creaser, but um, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't in love with that one. And, and uh, so we let it go, but I did find this A-frame and it's on wheels. 
and it makes a really nice um, port saddlery. When I spent a lot of time there with Tony when they were in business, um, they had a lot of these A-frame type deals just to stack leather on or partial sides or whatever you're doing. And it takes up a lot less room than trying to put this on a bench or like this one here, having it on a saddle stand or something, it just takes a lot of space. So at least this, I can move it out of the way when it's in my way. Um, and it gives me something too to model after if I want to build another one of these. But I may build another one for the warehouse. But for right now, this one is really handy. This is all the scraps we've got left from cutting what belts we've cut so far. So we'll be turning that into material packs as well as we go along. And now this is the one of the first, the, or this is one of my favorite pieces of equipment, new favorite piece. I still haven't found an exact home for it yet, but I've been playing with it and trying to get used to using it, and it works really, really well. It is a piece of machinery that you need to be careful with, and if you do decide to get one of these Cobra Class 14s uh, splitters, you need to be careful with it. It obviously is dangerous. It splits leather, so it will split your fingers, but it's very easy to use. It works really well. I did have a little bit of an issue with it this weekend, but it was user error. It was my fault, and so we got that figured out, and the machine is great. I end up, I've, I've split up a lot of scrap with this machine, and we will do a full review. Um, once I kind of get to know the machine a little bit more, I'll do a video and show a lot more about this machine um, as far as just using the machine. I'm not a machine mechanic, so I don't want to get into all the adjustments and all the things and maintenance and everything because that's more Cobra's deal and there's really good videos out there that show you how to do that so I don't want to step out of my lane there and try to act like I'm a mechanic because I'm not I'm a user so I'm going to use this machine and I'll kind of show you what I like about the machine and um, any concerns I might have with the machine and maybe a little safety tips or something but we'll do a we'll do a full little video on it. But it is a very very useful machine. Very it's it's not cheap, but it is very useful and it really allows me to put the scrap leather that I have to better use. There's just so much of that stuff that I could use, but it's too thick for whatever it might be a wallet or 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 a little uh, notebook or something like that. Now I can go through all this scrap and we can level that out to whatever size that I need or thickness that I need. And so it really makes your shop a lot more efficient, and I'm, I'm really happy that we got this machine in here. All right, so as you can see, we've got the lights now in the warehouse, so now we can see. We do have a big roll-up door. Uh, this may be the first time that we've shown this part of the building, but it's got a concrete floor, just a metal building, not insulated or anything like that, but it's a really good spot to work on machines. These machines here that you see, this is my old Furco. It actually... It's nothing wrong with it. It's old, it's got a lot of miles on it, but uh, we're gonna clean it up some and try to tighten it up a little bit and we may um, do something with that machine. This machine here needs a little bit of work. We're gonna try to get it going. And then I've got a couple little machines over there, an old bell skyver that I picked up and then a uh, piece of a Landis finisher that actually works fine, just needs a, a new motor. And then on that corner over there, we've got uh, our washing station and we'll show you that and then we've got our clicker set up for now over here and I'm about to show you that but the warehouse is um, Going to be really nice to be able to pull stuff in the UPS comes with leather. We can unload that We'll get rid of a lot of this clutter here on this sidewall and I'll probably move most of the leather storage Out to the warehouse just so it's not cluttering up the workshop So we've got a little more room if we do decide to do you know build a couple more benches or something for maybe some classes or workshops but um, this area is very useful, and so now that we've got lights, um, it's got power running and everything, just the bulbs were out, and they're 20 foot in the air, so I couldn't get to them to change them out. But, um, but anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out really good. We've got quite a bit of space back here and room to grow. And so here's the other piece of equipment that we got last week that came in, but it's the uh, Cobra 10-ton clicker. Now, this clicker is uh, one of the smaller versions. It's actually a 220. And so most of your clickers and bigger machines like that are going to be a need three phase power or you're going to have to have a converter. The uh, 10 ton does not require that. So it's just a 220. So we did have to have the electrician come in and put a 220 outlet here for us. We already have power back here, but we needed the 220 uh, plug to run it. But it fires up, runs great. And like I said, we'll do a video on this, a video review on the clicker. This may or may not be a machine that you will ever have in your shop, depending on the size of your shop and some of your goals. 
It's definitely not a cheap piece of machinery to buy, but it's a very useful piece of machinery to um, click out any kind of pattern. This is what I've done too, just a piece of scrap here, clicking out our, our uh, latigo keepers. So these will go, will go on saddles, what we call uh, rig catchers or latigo keepers. And so that'll go up on the front of the saddle by the swell and uh, where you slide your latigo in. I've got dies already made for all these because I used to use the clickers that port saddle ring in. So we've had some dies for over the years. Um, it'll cut out my hobble straps as well, stirrup hobble straps. Um, like I said, we've got knife, knife sheets pattern. I've got a few spur strap patterns. So uh, a one spur strap pattern. And so these machines are really, really handy for being able to cut out material really fast. It's precise because it cuts it out exactly like what the die shape is. So as long as your pattern's correct and your die's made correct and it doesn't get bent or anything, it'll cut the piece out perfectly. And so it really can speed things up. Uh, like I said, I've been doing this for 15 years full time as a business and this is the first time I've had one of these in my shop. I probably should have had one a long time ago, but we had access to, uh, thankfully, with our friends there at Quartz that were gracious enough to let us use their clickers whenever we needed to, and so we could cut out some of the smaller items. But still, I probably should have done it a long time ago, but take your time. You don't step up and you don't have to get it super fast. You don't have to put yourself in a bind to get something like this. Um, like I said, it depends on how many units you're making. If you follow Odin Leather Goods, um, on Instagram or something like that. I think he may have a couple of these, but that guy makes uh, thousands of units of things. Like he'll make a, like 100, 200 wallets. To cut all those out by hand would, would so, be so inefficient that it wouldn't work for him. So his, his ability to keep his price point down, his man hours uh, low enough in the product to where he has room to price it the way he wants to price it is, has a lot to do with his being able to cut the parts out quickly. And so if you're doing a lot of stuff, it's something to look into um, if you're doing it as a hobby or like I said I've been doing it 15 years just knife cutting everything but I do a lot of ones and twos I don't do a lot of multiple units um, but our main reason for getting this machine was one to because we can help you guys with some stuff as far as clicking out some of our project kits and our, pro our projects that we create we can click those out and offer those to you if, if you if you're interested in them but also too we want to be able to have more of our items available for purchase on the retail floor like our wallets and um, knife sheets and different things some of my saddle parts uh, i hate cutting out um, we'll, we have dies made for that i've got one this one this is my rig and slide pattern which is the it's kind of the connector from the front rig to the tree and that i hate cutting this out by hand i always have i've never enjoyed cutting these out so this was usually one of the last pieces i put on I only put it on the saddle when I absolutely had to because I was fixing to glue the seat down. Um, and now I can just click this out, which I've had this die, but I didn't have any way of cutting it when we, when we lost access to quartz uh, saddle or clickers. And so, so there's just a lot of things that can be ben beneficial to you, um, but it's not a mandatory thing. Uh, it's kind of like having a CNC machine or something like that. As you go and as you, as, depending on what direction your business is going, you may look into having a clicker. You can also find them used. Like I said, the one thing that you want to remember though, if you find them used, um, is that the, a lot of time they're going to be three phase, which means that most buildings aren't powered or wired for three phase. I don't know enough about it. Don't get me into trying to explain that because I don't understand electricity uh, for the most part. But I do know that my electrician was not super excited that I might get something that was three phase because of the way the building's wired and stuff. Um, and so it's nice to know that the 10 is just a single phase, 220, something pretty simple. It's not that big of a deal. So, but just keep your eye out on that. You can buy a converter. There's a converter that'll, that'll allow you to run it on a single phase. Um, again, I don't understand a lot of that. Some of y'all out there probably understand that a lot more. But let's check out the wash station. All right, so this is the, the back corner of the shop, basically, the back corner of the warehouse. We've got the roll-up door so we can roll it up. I'll show you some of the little things that we have to do with the, with the wash tub at the moment, but this is basically just an old claw foot wash tub, just an uh, old porcelain wash tub. I uh, took the, I didn't take the feet off. I've had, I had one of these that I did make at the house um, years and years ago, but this one actually was out of the shop that I apprenticed in. And it, actually I stood at this tub more hours than I can tell you about washing saddles because I did that man's repair work. And so I spent a lot of time at this particular tub here washing saddles before I was ever a saddle maker per se. 
So I was just a repairman and I was learning. And so this was actually the original tub. I took it out whenever we moved out of that building when we sold it. But it's just a pipe frame and then you put the tub in there. It's made to fit this tub and that way it gets it up off the ground some so that you're not bent over and, and hurting your back washing these things. And it, it's, it's higher than even just a saddle rack. So it makes it much more comfortable. Um, but then I built these blocks. There's some wooden blocks under here. I built that just to build, make it up even higher because he was a little Italian man and I'm six foot three or so. And so I needed, needed it to be raised up just a little bit more. We've got a drain and then we've just got a water hose uh, so that you can get around the saddle, rinse it off. The main benefit to doing it in a tub like this or some, something like this is that you don't get soaking wet. I mean, you're gonna get some water on the floor, no big deal. But if you've washed saddles already, you've probably washed them on a rack in your yard or out the back of your shop or something like that. Your boots get wet, your pants get wet. It just, it makes a filthy mess. And so this is a lot better because it, it drains out. You stay drier. It just makes it a lot nicer. And, um, and what we did was, and again, this was something, this was something that he already had designed when I went to work for him. So I just kept it going. That's how we, I've always done it. But he built, I guess he built, or somebody built this little device here. It'll slide around, it slides back and forth on here, and your saddle sits on top of this rack. This is just some, I guess, three quarter inch square stock. You could use rebar or thin pipe or anything like that. It's just very simple, um, very crude. It's not very fancy or anything like that, but it's just something that holds the saddle and it's stable as you're scrubbing on it and washing it. That works out really good. And then this stand here is a stand that I picked up at the text hand sale. And it's just a, it's a job rack is what it is. They used it in the, in the shop, I'm sure it's a job rack. The saddles they're working on all went on here. It'll hold 10 saddles, five on each side. Um, it'll hold four completed saddles, five if they're not completed. Otherwise they don't have fenders and stirrups in there. The bottom one, if you had a full saddle, they'd drag the ground and stuff. But it's gonna work out great for us. It gives us another place to set a saddle let them dry we can wheel them around if i need to get over there and i've got some saddles coming out of the workshop or taking these in there you can wheel them down this shop isn't that long it's not that big of a walk but i thought how can you pass up on a rack that's on wheels like that i can't pass that up so i had to get one they had a bunch of them there they had a bunch of different types of saddle racks there but i really like that one it's it's worth what i gave for it in scrap iron if i if i decide to get rid of it but i really like it i think it's gonna work out really good all right, and so here's just another look at the tub in case you want to get just a little closer view um, <clears throat> as far as the setup. But like I said, it's just an old porcelain tub. But this is the pipe frame. It's got a pipe that runs on each side. These old tubs had a little overlap here where it rolled. And so that actually fits perfect with a piece of drill stem pipe under there. And then I built these blocks right here just to get it up off the ground. Um, if I was building it new, obviously I'd make it the height that I wanted it. And here I've just got, a, I've got the pipe coming out and just kind of elbowed. Um, and then just I just put a coupler on there that this just screws in here Just a little cheap discharge hose for like an RV or something and um, But right now what we do is none of this is glued. It's just loose like that So I can take it apart if I need to there's no pressure on it It's just a drain and all it's draining is soapy water So I just run that hose out that door or I can run it out this roll-up door if I need to and move it around where it's not draining in the same spot all the time or water the grass out there, whatever. All it is is soap and water. Um, there's no grease or oil or anything like that. But eventually what I'll end up doing is I'll pipe this out the wall and then um, maybe see if we can pipe it into the sewer or something like that. But I don't really see any need. Like I said, it's nothing, no different than washing your car in your yard or anything like that. It's just, it's just gonna be, you know, dirt, arena dirt and soap and water is all it is. So, but that's the drain on it. And it, like I said, main thing is it just keeps it, the tub mainly just keeps you from getting soaking wet and it gets the saddle up high enough where you're working on it without having to be bent over and hurting your back. That's the main thing um, in any shop as far as, you know, comfort goes. You definitely don't want to strain your back doing a lot of this stuff. So make sure your saddle racks are the right height and that kind of thing. And then over there in the corner, my wife's got our weight equipment set up and stuff like that. I don't really like spending a lot of time over here, so um, it's really dusty, but I need to. I need to get over there. That's really all I got for you this week. Um, like I said, we've got a lot going on here in the shop, so we've been really busy. So if you've been calling or if you've sent me an email, just hang tight. We're trying to get to all those, but we've got a lot of things going on here. And so I've just kind of been tied up between trying to get that set up and we've got some business stuff going on. 
that uh, that's going to be real good. It's good stuff. So we're trying to get that all wrapped up. And plus, it's end of the year. Had to do inventory. Some of y'all saw that on my Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So January, first couple of weeks is always just a, it's just kind of a pain in the butt because you're just one, you're just trying to get back in the sink after being on a little vacation or whatever. But but everything's going great. Again, I want to thank everybody that bought uh, belt blanks from us or the belt kits from us. We're putting more and more of those together as fast as we can. Y'all keep buying them up, so that's good. We really, really appreciate that, and we've got more leather coming. Um, until we kind of get rolling on this thing uh, on a pretty consistent basis, um, we'll, we'll kind of get better about Herman keeping up with us and, and, and us knowing how much we need to order because the first order I made X amount of sides um, to tack on to what we already order to cover you guys on these belt uh, kits, these material packs, and they sold out super quick so the next order i went ahead and doubled it and um it sold out really quick so the next order you know we're, we're we still got a little bit left but i'm pretty well pretty well getting close to being sold out but as i see them sell out i'm usually doing them like 25 at a time like i said before so um if you see them out of stock just check back because i'm trying to monitor that and when they run out we'll cut some more put them back on there and that way we have more available and then as soon as we hopefully at some point we'll keep it we'll get it to where we got uh, a good enough supply that we'll we won't run out of stock but i don't want to do a back order deal on those because i don't i'm not in control of when the leather comes from the tannery so i just want to be sure that we have it have it here and have it ready to ship whenever you get them um, and then as more things come available we'll let you know we're going to get back at it this week we've got a busy busy week sorry the episode came out a little bit late it's going to happen occasionally but uh good thing is we got next week to try again harder and hopefully next week I'll get it out maybe even on Monday afternoon instead of Monday night or Tuesday morning. But anyway, no promises. We'll do our best. Lost Trade Podcast, uh, last week's was Dusty Smith came out, and that was a really good episode. We got a lot of good feedback on that, so really appreciate it. Um, we've got a bunch more interviews scheduled up, and so we'll be working on those, trying to get consistent on that. So hopefully we won't miss a week, and we'll be one a week um, uh, posting a new podcast episode. So we really appreciate you guys listening to that. If you hadn't subscribed to this channel already, please do so. And uh, otherwise, if you're ever in the neighborhood, come by and visit with us. I'm going to get back to work. Got a lot to do today. Hope you all have a fantastic week and a great weekend. And we'll see you in the next Monday morning briefing video. Oh yeah, real quick. If you got a belt material pack from us and there was no sticker in there, I apologize for that. We ran out. I had a whole pile of them and I guess Claudia is just giving them away willy nilly. So um, we kind of ran out. I just got another two or three hundred of them in. So shoot me a message or come by the shop or just let me know when you order again or whatever. Or shoot me an email or something and we'll send you one. She didn't forget to put them in there. We just ran out. So if you didn't get one, don't freak out. We got more gold or keep, keep more and more on stock. But um, we didn't realize they were going to go that fast. But anyway, if you didn't get one, let me know. We'll get one to you. Thanks.